with him began in quite a different way, your, your interaction with him. Right. Um, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd been fascinated by him for years, um, especially by The Mind of an Eminist, which came out in 68 in yeah. English. Mm -hmm. But then when The Man with a Shattered World came out uh, in 73, uh, I think late 72, I wrote a review of it, uh, which also became an, an essay on, on Luria. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this was published in, in June of 73, mm -hmm. which was the same month as my book Awakenings came out. Uh -huh. And then the following month, I got, um, I got one of these wonderful envelopes from Moscow with, with beautiful, beautiful stamps. And, uh, he was a uh, great stamp collector. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and Luria's handwriting. I was very excited. It was like, like getting a letter from Freud. Yeah. And he sent, uh, he sent me first a very long letter in response to my essay. Um, which, um, which really spoke of many, many aspects in his own life and how um, separate he felt from both the Pavlov and Skinner and, and, and from mechanical thinking, right. how, um, how important f for him it was to see things in terms of social development mm -hmm. uh, so that there was never just an autonomous child, there was always a mother and child, there was always a dialogue. And, um, well, he spoke of many, many things, including his, um, including the way in which Pavlov responded mm -hmm. to Luria's own first book, The Nature of Human Conflicts, when, when, when uh, Pavlov refused to read it and said, you call yourself a scientist. Um, I mean, it, it was a wonderful open letter. And then a week after that, I got another letter about awakenings. And, um, so this was the start of a correspondence which went on till Luria's death in 77. But I, I never met him. I, I don't know what inhibited me from going to Moscow. Um, but the, uh, the correspondence then ramified in different directions. Um, at, uh, um, early on, he hoped one might republish in English uh, some of the classics in Russian, mm -hmm. neuropsychology, and Sekhanov, and, and some works by his own father, R. A. Luria. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, 1974, when I had my, my strange leg accident and mm -hmm. with a feeling of alienation in the leg, mm -hmm. I, um, I wrote at length, I, I found this unintelligible, and, and, and I couldn't communicate with anyone except to Luria, and I, I wrote to him then, and uh, there was a lot of correspondence about this, and he, um, which especially had to do with the nature of action and body image, mm -hmm. and how something could be excluded from body image or alienated if it wasn't active. And um, I, uh, I um, wondered whether I should write about this or not. And he finally got so um, uh, so enthusiastic. He sent me a telegram from Moscow saying, "Do it." <laughs> and, and, and you can quote my letters if you want to. Um, uh, in the 75, I started to see a patient with Tourette's syndrome, and um, I sent Luria some tapes of this, some audio tapes, and he was fascinated and thought there were some similarities between the mental processes of the, of the Tourette and his Nemanist. He partly saw this as Nemanism in action. Um, in... Uh, um, Duncan Dallas, a filmmaker, hoped to make three documentaries, one with Luria, one with Skinner, and one with me. Mm -hmm. He made the documentaries with uh, Skinner and, and with myself, mm -hmm. but by that time Luria was, was feeling too, too ill, I think, to contribute. Um, occasionally, completely different things would come out in the letters. Um, one of them was his fondness for detective stories. Mm -hmm. And I, I sent him a number of those. I think he the was a terrific <laughs> admirer of American <laughs> detective yes. stories and English detective yes. stories. I, I think the one he liked most was the, the, um, the Sherlock Holmes one, the 7% the solution, which imagines Sherlock Holmes as a cocaine addict being, right. be, being analyzed by Freud. Right. Luria loved that. Right. I sent him all the Niall Marsh books, I remember. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, uh, he especially asked, I think, for the Nicholas Freeling books for, yeah. from me. Yeah, yes, right. Yeah. Right. 
to what extent did, uh, you're one of the few uh, people who write about Luria and his notion of romantic science. And I'm curious about the sort of initiation or the cause effect or relationship between your ideas on this topic and his. How did that come up? In the first time? Um, well, um, the early Luria I read was very different. I think the first Luria I read was the um, probably in the late 50s, was the nature of human conflicts, and in particular, uh, the way in which someone with Parkinsonism, who, uh, who could not um, take a step by himself, could organize movement by, by using a higher cortical mechanism. And since I, would, I had seen this constantly among my own patients, but this was the first consideration I'd seen. Then in the mid-60s, um, higher cortical functions was published and somehow the, the stultifying f sort of phrenological neurology which, you know, which I had been taught could be replaced by this wonderful notion of functional systems uh, with, with different components and um, that seemed to me very, very exciting. But then an entirely different sort of excitement came in when I saw The Mind of an Eminist. I, I read the first 30 pages thinking it was a novel. Mm -hmm. And then I realized it wasn't a novel, mm -hmm. but a wonderful case history with all the accuracy of science, mm -hmm. but all the sensibility and drama and structure of a novel. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, I'm sort of a storyteller myself, or rather I have a storytelling impulse, mm -hmm. which sometimes seems to compete with the analytical impulse. Um, and, uh, um, but certainly seeing the mind of an eminist, I think, made me, fortified me in my own feeling that I had to attempt some similar sort of portraits of my own patients, which is, which is what I, I did in Awakenings. Um, and uh, I, I love Victorian case histories and their, their richness of detail and their insight and their, you know, their, their human character. Um, and I had been feeling that neurology was becoming very desiccated. And um, uh, in, in Luria's romantic case histories, uh, um, I had the feeling that the, the richness of 19th century naturalism was recovered along with a sort of functional analysis which, which was completely new and which could take everything to, to a higher level. So I was, I was thrilled by this.